before getting into the video, I do want to say thank you for sending in your minimalist questions. This is part two of the minimalist Q&A. If you guys want to do a part three, part four, part five, leave your questions down below or you can leave them in my inbox on Instagram. Um, I get asked this a lot, not just about minimalism, but do I have any favorite books in general? And the short answer that I can give you guys is, unfortunately, I do not read any books. I'm so swamped with work and when I'm not working, I'm either cleaning, taking care of the house, creating new recipes. I've been making everything from scratch. So I think like the only thing I've been reading is recipes. So I don't have any books to recommend, whether it's minimalist books or non-minimalist books. I, I don't have any books to recommend and I'm so sorry. Perhaps that would change in the future when I have more time to pick up reading as a hobby. Do you ever miss decorating your home? Yes, I do. I will say my first apartment, the decor was based on plants. I do miss having plants a lot. More now than ever, I feel like plants, they bring, they bring some kind of happiness into the home for myself. Like it brings some kind of peace, I should say. I don't know how to explain it, but I do have a green thumb. Unfortunately, I cannot have plants here due to my cat. Again, this is a small apartment and we do not have any lights. You guys are seeing a decent amount of lighting right now and that's because I'm literally up against the window. We only have one window in this apartment. So maybe when we move, I don't know when that will be, but I do plan on doing a little bit of decorating. I'm not gonna lie. I have so many ideas when it comes to minimal decor and just making things look a little bit more homey. Don't get me wrong, I love the empty look. I have no problem with having an empty room with just a bed. That's what we have in this bedroom, it's just our bed. And I have no problem with that, but I do miss adding some kind of greenery with plants around the house. How do you store photos? So I've actually talked about this numerous times. The way I store photos, I do have a memory box in my closet. I have quite a few photos in there and those photos are like old, I would say. I would say like recent photos are in my external hard drive. Old photos of me when I was a baby, um, my niece and nephew, me and my mother, my sisters, me and my partner. I will have all those old photos in that box because I haven't had the time to transfer all of them to an external hard drive but current photos are on the external hard drive because it's just a lot easier. Tips and tricks to minimize waste. So the biggest tip and trick I have when it comes to minimizing your waste is switching over to reusable items. I have a ton of reusable items. I actually made a folder on my Amazon storefront. If you guys wanna check that out, I'll have it linked down below. And it's all of the reusable items that I have purchased over the years on Amazon. From my sponges, my nail filers, they even have reusable Q-tips if that's your thing. They have a lot of reusable items. If you don't find what you're looking for with my little storefront, you can just search on Amazon or through Google. So that's the biggest tips and trick I can give you guys like is to switch over to reusable items to reduce your waste. Again, I feel like a lot of people think that I'm zero waste. I'm not. So. I do live a minimalist lifestyle, not a zero waste lifestyle, but I do try my best to watch what I put in the trash and try to create less waste, but I'm, I'm not zero waste. I feel like a lot of people get like minimalism and zero waste confused. They're not the same. Do you use up products if it turns out they do not work for you? So the old Kira would use up products. I wanna say like maybe 2017 Kira would use up the products so I wouldn't waste a dime. Now I try my best to keep the receipt to return the product if it doesn't work for me, or I will give it to a family member if the, if the product causes a rash, if the product is just not for me at all. There's been quite a few products that I have given to my sister-in-law, my sisters, my mother, because sometimes it just doesn't work out for me. And again, I either return the item or I donate it to someone that will get better use with it instead of me suffering through using that product. What are some of the benefits of minimalism physically and mentally? I would say some of the benefits of minimalism, one, saving a ton of money. 
to being cautious of what you bring in and bring out of the house. I would also say like the biggest thing is you learn the importance of life. A lot of people feel or think that material items will make your day or make you the happiest person, luckiest person alive. Like to have a new Tesla, to have a closet filled with all new clothes, to have your hair done every day. Those things are only temporary happiness and minimalism has taught me so much when it came to how materialistic I was. I was that type of girl, like when I was 20, 21 years old, I was that type of girl I wanted lipstick from Chanel. Even though I couldn't afford it, I would pur purchase the replica version of it just to have the logo on the lipstick. So embarrassing, but again, we live and we learn. And I now understand the importance of life and know that materialistic things are just that. They're just material items. They do not bring happiness. They can make you happy for a little bit, but they're not the full circle of what makes you happy. And I've just learned to respect life in a different way, if that makes any sense. How do you celebrate the holidays as a minimalist? Again, this is something I've talked about numerous times, but I just celebrate the holidays with going to family's houses, hanging out, eating dinner, watching a movie, just your typical hanging out situation. We don't give gifts. And we constantly, constantly tell our family members, please do not give us any gifts. We're all set. I told my mom, like, do not give me a Christmas gift because my mom is really big into the holidays. She will even like get a second job in order to have extra money to buy gifts for the holidays. Until this day, I always tell her, please, if you're gonna purchase me something, do something else for me. Put that money that you're gonna spend on me, put that money towards your credit card debt. Because like most people, she's in an enormous amount of credit card debt. So I'm a huge advocate for not giving gifts, especially when you're in credit card debt, student loan debt. Pay your debt off before helping others. If you cannot help yourself, then how can you help others? That's what I always tell her. And that's coming from personal experience. I was in student loan debt for a long time until I realized I'm spending a lot of money on gifts. I'm spending a lot of money on this. Like in order for me to help others, I need to help myself first. That is something that I'm very happy and grateful that I've learned over the years. So when we have children, we can teach them that yes, you can give a gift if you want to and if you can afford it, but that's not the main thing with the holidays. The main thing is family and, and friends. That's the most important thing of the holidays is spending time with the people you love. Balancing the desire to be a minimalist versus the desire to have multiple of some items for convenience and efficiency. I will say, even though I live a minimalist lifestyle, there are a few backups that I have and that's okay. There's no rules when it comes to living a minimalist lifestyle. I feel like some people think there's like some kind of rule book you need to go by and there is none. So if there's certain items that you wanna have multiples of and you feel like you need to have multiples of, just go with your gut feeling. If you feel like this is convenient for you to have backups of certain items, go for it. And that's kind of how I don't overdo it is I always have just one backup of these items, but just go with your gut feeling when it comes to backup items and like multiples of your favorite items. Thoughts on luxury items and minimalism. I talked to my partner, I'm like, I don't know, like if I was to make more money, would I spend that kind of money on a cardigan or a sweater? And he had a point. He's like, well, you have to think of the quality of the clothing item, like, is it gonna last you years and years? Then technically you're, you'll get that money back because you're not constantly spending money on clothes that are ripping. So I think with certain items, luxury items, like you have to weigh out the pros and cons with that luxury item. Say a Tesla, I feel like Teslas are luxury items or actually like a Lucid or a Tesla. Those two cars, they look very luxurious, but they're electric. So the pro to that is with buying a thirty-five to $37,000 car, the pro to that is you're not paying for gas anymore. You have an electric vehicle, so you don't have to pay for gas. You don't have to pay for oil changes, transmission fluid changes. Like the pro is the maintenance compared to a regular car. I just had to do an oil change. I also had to do a tune-up and it costs like four to $500. So even though some people will be like, oh, well having a Tesla or a Lucid, those are luxurious items. Again, the pros and cons. Yes, the con is that they are pricey, but the biggest pro which outweighs the con is the fact that you are saving 
money, even though the car is pricey, eventually the car will be paid off unless you have the money to buy it in cash. You won't have to think twice about maintenance. I mean, there will be some things you need to fix, but not like your typical maintenance you would have to do on a regular car. My thoughts are completely different when it comes to luxury items. Now, if you're talking about name brand like Louis Vuitton, Hermes, I know those are high quality items, but they're also like a social staple item. I feel like people tend to buy them just because of the logo. But again, that's my preference. Some people do love the quality of those items and they feel like it's worth the price tag, which that's okay because everybody's different on what they wanna spend their money on when it comes to luxury items or not. Again, for me, I think certain clothing items, as long as they don't have like a logo smacked onto it, certain clothing items due to the material, if it's gonna last me 10 to 20 years, it just might be worth the 200 to $300. So I have a different outlook on expensive items now. What made you become a minimalist? So I have talked about this numerous times on my channel and I will sum it up for you guys. Um, I don't wanna make this Q&A any longer than it is, but the number one reason on why I decided to become a minimalist was the fact that I, I wanna change in my life. I, I didn't wanna be like relying on material items to make me happy like the friends that I was hanging out with, they relied on a lot of material items to make them happy. So every day they would be purchasing something new and something flashy. And I was heading into a dark path with the amount of things that I was buying. I could have had so much money saved when I lived with my mom if I was to just get my stuff together earlier. When I adapted a minimalist lifestyle, it was in 2016. And within that one year span before I moved out in 2017, I was able to save $14,000 with just switching the way I think about material items, selling items I don't need, and just doing a whole revamp on my lifestyle. I kind of got a glimpse of what my life was gonna look like if I didn't make the switch to not just the minimalist lifestyle, but if I just didn't make the switch to learning how to be an adult and save money and learning that material items do not bring you happiness and sometimes one item is more than enough you do not need to like overdo it constantly so i was very greedy back then i wanted more and more and more and i was extremely extremely depressed because i felt like i didn't have enough even though i had a room filled with purses, filled with shoes, clothes, makeup yes most of it was replicas but I was just trying to be someone who I was not and I just had a hard glimpse of what my life was going to look like in the next 10 years if I didn't change. So yeah, I started watching a ton of minimalist YouTubers. I just like soaked in that minimalist lifestyle. Like I soaked in every minimalist podcast, every minimalist video way before I even thought I wanted to do YouTube and I just soaked it all in. Like I was the dishwasher at work and every chance I had to put my headphones in, that is what I was doing. I was constantly learning and realizing, all right, I, I don't need a ton of makeup. I don't need 50 lipsticks. If I want to wear lipstick, all I really need is one. And when that one runs out, I can adventure in another color. So that's kind of to sum it all up is, I wanted to change my life. I wanted to do it for me, not for anybody else around me. I spent my entire 20s dressing for everybody else, getting a, a fancy car to look good for everybody else. Like I wanted to finally do something for me. And my future self right now thanks that younger version of myself to, I hope that makes sense, that younger version of me for making that switch. Because if it wasn't for her switching her mind, I wouldn't be where I'm at right now. I, I probably wouldn't even be with my partner because we didn't agree on a lot of things when it came to how I spent money. And finances is a huge part. Finances and communication, two big parts of having a healthy relationship. If you cannot communicate with your partner, then how are you going to get through tough situations? Also, if you cannot talk about finances, again, how are you going to get through certain situations? So yeah, my life is completely different all thanks to my younger self for making that switch. And the last question is, what are your thoughts about people needing to buy things to feel good about themselves and mask emotions? It's a process. It's not what I feel about people. Again, what I feel doesn't matter. It's irrelevant. It's what that person feels. So 
I do wish back then I, I would have seen a therapist for a shopping addiction. They do have therapists for that. They have a therapist for literally everything. If you're going through a divorce, they have a therapist for that. If you're dealing with an eating disorder, they have a therapist for that. So I wish I would have seen a therapist for my shopping addiction. I thought things would make me happy. If I was feeling lonely at night, I would take my keys and go drive to the nearest CVS or Walgreens, whatever was 24 hours and purchase a bunch of makeup because I was feeling lonely and thought that would make me happy. And then the minute I got home, I wouldn't even take the makeup out of the bag. Like the, the rush was gone. So those were emotions that I, I needed to kind of go through in order to figure out what was the biggest problem. Why was I feeling so alone? Was it because I didn't have the right friends? I wasn't surrounded by the right friends? Was it because of my career choice? M again, my thoughts on people that spend money to make themselves happy does not matter. What matters is how they're feeling. So if you are that person that is spending money on things in order to make you feel happy, there is professional help out there, believe it or not. And one of my biggest tips, not my thought, but my biggest tip for you is to get down to the bottom of it. Like, why are you purchasing these items? Is it to fill a void that you've been neglecting for a while? Like, get to the bottom of why do you feel that you need to purchase items constantly. So till this day, I do not judge anybody that's going through shopping addiction because I went through it myself and it sucks. I went through that for years. It's not something that's like, oh, a quick fix. It takes time. So try your best not to judge others because you never know what that person's going through. Anyways, you guys, I hope you enjoyed this Q and A. Leave your questions down below if you would like a, I think we're on part three. Next time will be part three. If you would like, leave your questions down below and I will catch you in the next video. Mm -hmm.